we've got our base all ready now, what we're going to do is we're going to put the steaks in next. Um, so I've got 24 steaks chosen from the five foots. These are slightly thinner, slightly less weighty than the actual steaks that I put in here to begin with. So just a notch down when you're sorting through your pack. What I'm looking for with these steaks is I'm looking again for uniformity. All of these need to look the same. I'm not necessarily too worried about length because we're going to border um, roughly ideally the same length but what for me is crucial is the border is going to hit about there on this rod and if we've got any imperfections or any scabs or any little animal bites or insect bites that may crack the willow I would discard it now so a really good glance at your willow to check for any imperfections before you put it in. We can obviously put stuff in a little bit later on, but I'd prefer not to. I'd prefer to get it right from the start. So you might be working on your table. I'm just working on my knee and on the floor just because it's a little bit easier for you to see. So I'd be taking my rod that I've chosen um, and I'm looking for that natural smile, that natural slope. I've got my base so that the curvature on my base is like this as well. And if you sort of think of a spider that sat up on its legs, that's what we're aiming for. So we're now going to cut this so that we can insert this down the side of our rods. Um, and you want to see what we're doing in a little bit more close detail. So what I'm going to do is I've got this curve and I'm going to use my secateurs and I'm going to put a sloping cut onto here. What I want to do is to insert this down one side of the rod. So this one would be inserted down this side, and if I was going the other way, the slope would work the other way being inserted in there. What I want to do is to get in as far as I can, ideally at least halfway, if not a bit and a half would be great. So because this is fresh willow, I can easily push this in, no problems whatsoever. And you can see that that's gone all the way into there. With my second rod, I want to do the same. Think about that smile, think about that curve. Again, cut in the opposite direction so that this one is going to run on the opposite side. But say, for example, it might be a little bit stiff to put it in there. There's a couple of tricks and techniques that you can use to get it in a little bit easier. So here I have a pot of tallow, and again, if you refer to the tools video, we've got some more information about tallow and about vegan options for tallow as well. So one thing you could do is to just simply insert the bottom of your rod into your tallow, and that acts as a little bit of a lubricant in order to slide that in a little bit easier. If you're finding that, for example, it's really difficult to get in, then you can use your bodkin, again lubricated with tallow, and you can push your bodkin into there before your rod. I wouldn't do it on my knee, I would be on a table. I don't want to put the bodkin through my knee. I want to be very careful and mindful of my hand. So rather than a push, it's a gentle screw into there. Allow a bit of time for the willow to ease and then hold before you screw out. What you don't want to do is for these rods to pop off the outside edge. But as I say, mine's going in really nice and gently and easily, so I can put that. And I've got one in either side of this rod that's working up here. I'm going to continue round and I'm going to insert the rods into all the rest of them, including this one that's sticking out proud, because I want to show you how to get away from ones that are slightly too proud a little bit later on. So I'm now going to work round and insert the rest of the 24. So here's my base with all the stakes inserted, ready for those to be pulled up to start forming the side of the basket. You'll observe that we've still got that nice curve. You'll also observe that these, the smile on the willow is forming away from us. The reason that the smile is forming away from us is that when I lift these rods up, they're more likely to form into an upright and a straight position. I could use the smile on the willow the other way around, so it could be coming up. And I could use that for a more curvaceous basket, so a rounded basket. But we're concentrating on a straight-sided basket, 
and I'll show you the sort of derivations of how they might look in a short while. But we're going to get on with our kinking to begin with. So, what we want to be thinking about is the width of this rod, and roughly you want to be kinking just at the edge of that width. So that's the distance you want to give it. Again, some basket makers like to use a knife. This could be done on a table. This could be done on the floor. I'm just in this awkward position so that you can see a little bit more clearly for camera. Be a little bit careful of your body as well and kinking the willows that are in the way. And also be a bit careful of the fire as well. So my gap, my distance down there, and I'm kinking my rod and I'm just lifting it slightly to the upright position. What I don't want to do is to overlift that rod. I let that slacken down and I can do the same again with the next rod, kink and lift. You'll notice that because of the position of this internal rod here, when I lift those up, it's not in the way. If I have a little bit of an accident while I'm working and say, for example, I completely misjudge and I kink far, far away from where I want to be. Well, that's easily remedied. I can just simply push that in a bit further if the willow will allow, which that one will. Um, if it won't allow, what I can do is to just take that rod out, cut it, reinsert it a bit shorter. Similarly, if I kink the willow and this is right up close to the weave, there's no gap behind. I need that gap behind there to fit some more willow in later. So if I want to adjust that, this time I just have to be a bit wary that I don't pop this weave off. So I'm just gonna very gently and very carefully pull it out, over exaggerate it, and then I can simply push it gently back into the position I desire. So I've got four rods there that are nice and upright, and I can carry on round and do the rest of them with no problem. But you remember a little bit earlier, I put that gone wrong in there for you. If I kink these two in the allocated position, when I lift those up, you can see quite clearly that this is proud. That's not acceptable. It's going to get in our way a little bit later on. So take your time and take care. If that does happen, take these two rods out cut this back to the position it should be and reinsert them so instead of it sitting too far out it sits nice and neatly tucked back in so i'm going to remedy that one now and i'm going to go round and i'm going to finish all the other rods all kinked up ready for the next stage so we've got all our rods kinked on our base and we're now ready to lift those up and secure them the first thing we need is a weight. You're going to place a weight in the middle of your basket just to stop things moving about. My preference of weight is this. It's my grandma's doorstop that I stole off her many years ago. Nice, good, weighty weight, uh, full of sand, and that will go nicely into the centre of my basket. It might be that you've got other things to hand at home. You might have got a metal weight. Again, bless a good old grandma, had this kicking around in the garage. Um, this is lovely and heavy, but if I put that onto my willow, it will mark my willow. So always have a piece of paper or something underneath the metal weight so it doesn't scar. It's also much more likely to scrape your willow as well. Failing that, you could just literally go and find something that you can wrap up in something to keep it nice and fresh and nice and clean. So. I'm not quite sure what's in here, to be perfectly honest, um, but it feels like it's probably some sort of gravel in a bag, um, and then that's just had some tape over to keep it waterproof. But you're roughly looking for the weight of a bag of sugar or half a house brick. The bigger the basket, the more weight we're going to need. So that's our weights discussed, and I'm going to go with my weight of choice. We also need to prep up. We're going to lift this basket up, and I need some method of tying it. Different basket makers use different tying methods. Some people use hoops, some people use string. I prefer rubber bands. So what I've got is I've got a normal, just bog standard rubber band. It could be thicker than this. Um, you know, you want a little bit of distance in it. Um, and I've got a piece of off cut willow. What I'm gonna do is to create a toggle. So I'm just gonna put that piece of willow like that and simply slip 
that side through that side so it's secured in a toggle form. And I've got that ready into hand. I've created two of those so that I'm not having to mess about when I lift everything up. So now on to the lifting. What we're going to do is we're going to lift from opposite sides of the basket. So we're going to take the two rods from here and we're going to match them with the two rods from here and roughly hold them in the middle. Same again, two from one side, two from another side. And we're going to carry on in that same way until all of the rods are gathered in our hand. And again, you could be stood on a table doing this, whatever works for you. I like to work on the floor. Oh, can you see here? I haven't kinked those rods. I felt as I pulled them up, I've obviously missed them. So just go steady as you're pulling up. It proves that we all do make mistakes and I can just come back in and I can re-kink those and lift those into position. And you can see those going up quite nicely and we're just gonna gather the last ones in here. I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time now resorting these. And what I want to be doing is to be tying them roughly so they're nice and level. I don't want to tie them with just one tie so they're still spread out. I want to tie them with two ties. So just spend a little bit of time sorting them through. Twist a little bit. And if you've got an extra pair of hands, that really helps. Now, seeing as the extra pair of hands are all looking at me from behind the camera, what I'm gonna do is to just take my rubber band. I'm going to wrap it around. And I'm just gonna use that toggle to flip onto one side and onto the other. And that holds that roughly in position. I'm going to put my second one on a little bit lower and again I'm just going to put my finger in there so as I pull the rubber band round I can go in with one side of the toggle and in with the other. It doesn't have to be massively tight, they're nice and you can run them up and down the willow but what we want to do is to secure that into a shape where it's nice and even and we've still got room to weave a little bit later on. So just roll those down if they're not in the right place or roll them up and we're ready now for the next stage. So I just wanted to show you um, how things might look if you insert your rods in different ways. So I've got in front of me three models that have been done on a log base. I've simply used a log base because it's easier to highlight what the rods are doing. It's very clear the contrast between the base and the rods. But using a wooden base is an acceptable way of doing a base for basketry. There's plywood bases, there's log bases, there's lots and lots of different ways to do them. But what I wanted to show you is that this one has been done with the same willow that we're using for our basket. We've just used the slipe and the smile in a different way. So instead of the spider going down, the spider's gone up. So you can see that it's created a much more curvaceous basket and it's sort of holding itself without me tying it up. Um, you've got to be very careful that this basket doesn't come in too quickly though. So again, it's about thinking and preparing for your basket early, choosing your shape, getting the rods inserted in the right way. If I move on to have a look at this one, this is a willow without much of a natural smile. It's a very upright, very erect willow. So this could have been put in either way around and it will give you that upright, erect basket. So in True Blue Peter style, I have got one here that was made with this willow. You can see the sides of that basket are coming straight up. However, in the spirit of gone wrongs, if you don't put your willow in in the right way, you don't put it in equally, you end up with a basket that's out of control right from the very beginning. And it's a bit difficult for you to see, but on this one, it's a model I've used to teach with. Some of these rods are thinner than others, some are fatter, some have got that horrible, gnarly bit I told you about. We're checking in again. Keep checking in for the bits where the border is going to sit, because at this stage, we've still got a little bit of time where we can adjust. Once we've started weaving, it's a bit of a different story. So just to show you how the smile of the willow might affect the shape of your basket. Mm -hmm.